Hello, everyone. My name is Alejandro del Pozo, and I'm an assistant professor and an extension specialist in the Department of Entomology at Virginia Tech. And I'm located at the Hampton Roads Agricultural Research and Extension Center in Virginia Beach. I would like to thank the 2021 Mid-Atlantic Strawberry Program organizers for extending me the invitation to present some of my research and available information on the use of new technologies for pests. Scouting is a critical task in any cropping system. Strawberries are not exception. Scouters or pest consultants will walk a selected field with the goal of assessing densities of any particular arthropod pest in the crop. Sometimes they will use some sort of collection equipment, like shown in the picture that Tupperware, to facilitate the count of the specimens once they slot from the plant. Scouting is also time consuming and can be left behind, especially during times when too many things are going on in the farm. Having additional layers of information will help to make better and informed decisions across processes in the farm, including pest management. For instance, the use of many remote sensing techniques will provide information on the health status of the crop. As, the name, as its name implies, the basis of remote sensing is to use available information, such sensors and drones, to gather all payable data from a location far from the area of interest. I am happy to report that they're here in Virginia Tech, there has been a coordinated effort to launch and reunite all faculty working with new technology, including precision agriculture and remote sensing under the umbrella of the brand new Center for Advanced Innovation in Agriculture. One example of new technologies available for being included as part of a pest management program is the use of PEPs remote monitoring. The premise of this technology is to use the sex pheromone beta traps to track the daily density fluctuations of Lepidopteran pests in a given crop. In this example, we use four resolution cameras being mounted on top. You have the liner where the moth are going to be attracted and get stuck in it. Every day, the cameras will take a picture, send it to a centralized uh, computer and the computer would recognize uh, those uh, Lepidopteran pest capture. Uh, you see here, every single trap has a weather station and it transmitted using you know, data, like the cell phone data. And they are all GPS marked, as shown here in the map. And basically at the end of the day, you're gonna receive an alert on your mobile device or, or your email telling you and actually giving you the information of the, the, the night before how many moths were captured in that specific trap. So those pictures taken from those uh, high resolution cameras are stitched together and analyzed by the computer, which recognize the, every single specimen for a target organism. This here an example, looking at diamond back moth a really important pass in call crops. And this computer has millions of pictures being taken before as part of the library. With a machine learning technique, the computer will recognize the different forms of shapes of the diamond back mode. So for this specific example, the squares, the thicker squares on the uh, Top left corner are the new are the new uh, adults being recognized by the computer, but also the thinner squares are the ones that the computer recognized the day before or or days before the last event of this uh, this photo. So that's how the computer can keep track of what already is existing and what is being captured new on the on the night of the selected night. Another example of available technology for pest management is the use of drones 
release laboratory rear beneficials in commercial fields. So the idea is to use this technology since some, we have some sort of labor shortage and the cause that incurs to have the crew doing all these uses beneficials, the idea is to use this available technology to reduce those costs and make it more mainstream. Uh, you can target, if you're interested in this technology, you can target to release beneficials in field perimeters or the interiors, also in the trap crop areas that you might have. And also if you're thinking about putting insect type plants, we'll talk about trap crops and insect type plants later in this presentation. You can use several different beneficials that be, you know, commercially reared from laboratories, including the minute pyrobug, the Oreos insidiosus, which is going to target thrips. You can also release lace wings, which are more general predators. They can go from soft body insects like aphids. Uh, and then you can have also predatory mites, uh, including amblasius and other predatory mites. It is important to understand that handling beneficials will require some planning before the execution of each release. Some things to consider when you're thinking about doing or establishing a release of beneficial program is the quality control of your, of your material that you want to see. So here's an example. We come up with this kind of like quick design where we take and sample lace wing eggs and put it on these containers on the right-hand side individually plays, and then we see how many of they will hatch. And therefore we can have, you know, some sort of measurement about the quality of the shipment that you get. It's also important to understand what will be the ratio and how do you distribute those ratios as we talked previously, that we need to do in the perimeters of the field, the entire field, and we do it in sections. And uh, will depend on your scouting and what's the pest pressure in your field. What will be the delivery mechanism? Uh, mechanisms? Is it going to be by hand, the crew, with the drone? How will be the, log the logistics? I mean, sometimes you got to overnight the shipments because there's live organisms and how much is the cost? Who's going to do what? So that's what I mean by having to do some additional planning. Uh, and then managing our expectations. So the idea of leasing beneficials and, you know, finding a right away we sold like an insecticide could be something that you need to have in the back of your mind. So here's an example in the bottom picture, what, you know, a first instar lace wing immature would look like. Sometimes you release this lace wing eggs and you might not be able to find this, you know, early instar lace wings. And the idea will be, are there, are they there? Are they present? So keep in mind that these guys will want to be really small and we need to train our eyes to look for this specific you know, stages to corroborate their presence in the field. Interested in exploring the use of drones, I team up with the, the organic grower in 2018 to become effects of releasing beneficials with drones on aphids and lettuce. That was my, during my previous job in the University of California before coming to Virginia Tech. Uh, we use uh, we selected four commercial lettuce fields and where we deploy all the experimental treatments. If it densities in lettuce heads were used as a proxy to determine the effect of experimental treatments. Plastic collection stations, as shown in the picture, were placed on top of the lettuce plants before the flight of the drone. Right after the drone flew above the experimental plots, those collection stations were retrieved and examined under magnification. As an example, the black arrows in the middle picture denotes the presence of right holes. These right holes are used as inner carrier material to be mixed with the lace wing eggs. Finally, the circle on the picture on the right-hand side denotes the presence of viable lace wing eggs inside the collection station. That was after the drone flew on top of this experimental plot. So seven days from the application, Aphid densities and lettuce were negatively impacted by experimental treatments that we deployed, either by the foliar application or by retrains, represented by the, by, uh, the black bars in this graph, or, uh, or the, by the release of lace wings with drones, represented by the gray bars. Uh, here, you're looking at it, it's experimental treatments on the x, the x axis, 
on the bottom of the graph. So we have the control with no treatment, the insecticide, the organic certified insecticide, and the beneficials. And then the treatments that share in the same letter are not different from each other. Another instance when we used drones was to release predatory mites in a trap crop for thrips. In the Salinas Valley, growers will use ice plants as living mulches to produce follow ground. These ice plant patches flowers at all times attracting western flower thrips. Without any management, these patches can become some sort of nurseries for increasing thrip populations. Thrips are vectors of a devastated virus and lettuce, and growers will do anything in their power to reduce thrips populations. To test the concept of managing trap crops, we release and please use mites in ice plant patches with the goal of reducing thrips populations. We split the, the patches with you know, untreated sections and treated sections. As you can see here on the graph, treated sections are denoted by the blue bar, the solid blue bar, and then the, uh, the section of the patch, the ice plant patch that receives the beneficials are denoted by the orange dotted line. Uh, the arrows, the black arrows, are uh, representing the times when we do the release with the with the drones. The asterisks, the notes, uh, the times that we were able to actually recover the, the amblyseus mites from the ice plant flowers. That was kind of like amazing to see that this this guys can stick around in the system after being. And the last example of using new technologies is the possibility of spraying any type of pesticide at the plant level. So here is an, I'm gonna play for you, so you have an idea. So basically what you have is a computer in the, in the machine, you have all these different solenoids. And they're taking pictures and recognizing the lettuce. And the lettuce that is gonna be kept in the field, you see these the application of a fungicide and an insecticide. So right there, you can see one person in the back looking at the computer, the computer is recognizing which one is the lettuce. And then this is how it looks. So this is the lettuce being recognized. And then there's a secondary manifold with a tank that actually sprays only that lettuce, reducing the use of overall active ingredient per area, meaning that we can use you know, that's pesticides in comparison to a broadcast application. This, this idea will help us if we're using some regulated pesticides in the future. Constantly new technology has been incorporated into farming. Several years ago, the use of in-field vacuuming was considered a new technology for pest managing strawberry. So this is really heavy. In, California right now using ligus management. The idea is that you run these, you know, vacuums, they're designed to go on top of the strawberry rows and sucking up all those insects and then, you know, removing them from, from the crop. Technology advancement will not necessarily be reflected into solely developing new equipment. New processes and technologies were established in strawberries when the use of alfalfa, alfalfa as a trap crop was proposed as part of the IPN program in this crop. The premise of a trap crop is to lure, target, and problematic pests away from the main crop. So the idea is to have this, you know, alfalfa um, strips. They are more attractive to the ligus specifically, the ligus bat, uh, bug. So they are gonna move away from the strawberries and going towards the, the alfalfa. The, the premise also is to do some type of management in the alfalfa strips, even though we would like to reduce the inputs for this, uh, for this tactic. The alfalfa can become also a nursery for the ligus crop if there's not much. Uh, also some of the driver that can influence the success of this um, alfalfa strip or trap crop, it's uh, presence of weeds in the surrounding area. So ligus bag will also be sustained and, and some other weeds besides the alfalfa, alfalfa trap crop. Some research has shown that benefits of having an alfalfa trap crop in strawberry for managing 
the Likersberg in California. So here you can see in, in, in this graph, the uh, white, the, the wide uh, dots are the ones that were collected from different strawberry rows uh, away from the alfalfa trap crop. So you see that the damage of the percentage of fruit damage got reduced in, in the presence of a trap crop compared to fields with no trap crop at all. Complement for the trap crop could be planting insect habitats, promote the presence of natural including beneficials. The rationale behind it is to provide alternative food and shelter to these beneficials. Therefore, present can be can result in predation services. Interesting and documented the effect of planting and listen as an insect type plant on aphids and hover flies, commercial lettuce fields. Uh, we conducted some research in 2018. The idea was to have the listen in the field. It would result in lower aphid densities per plant. Uh, we selected 12 commercial fields, grouped by planting date, and we have our three experimental treatments. The treatments were fields with not a lesion at all, fields with, the, with a lesion as an insect type plant with only one species, and then fields with, with more than one species of insect type plant, so a lesion plus something else. We collected lettuce plants and documented the density of aphids, hover fly, RV. From this experiment with insect type plants, it was documented that fewer aphids from lettuce plants were collected in experimental fields with only a lesson flowers. The graph shows the overall average of aphid densities per plant with the gray bars and hover flies larvae with the black bars. On the x-axis, there are experimental, there are the experimental treatments. Hover fly larva densities did not significantly vary among treatments. However, the ratio between hover flies and aphids was higher in the fields with only a lesson. And to recap and summarize the information set, uh, all these new technologies will help us to get additional layers of information that are gonna improve our pest management program, including one of the examples could be the pest remote monitoring when you gotta have you know, daily captures of labs, lepidopteran pests on the, at the level of your fingertips. Sometimes it could be overwhelming to have so much information, but the idea is that we're gonna create this environment where we can filter and we can select what are the information that's the alerts that you're gonna find, that you're gonna get. Well, hey, now we, we're betting, you know, there is some pressure on the cost and, you know, labor shortage that we're gonna have in, in, in the agriculture sector. So the use of drones could be a technology that was gonna help us to mitigate all this you know, challenging scenario. So in, in, in this specific case, the, the use of drones for releasing beneficials could be a not, it's, it's not gonna be a new technology anymore since it could be done mainstream since the costs are gonna be lower, there are more companies that are willing to do that. And then the cost for the beneficials are also going low. So making it attractive for more growers to adapt this, uh, this tactic. Um, regulations for insecticides are in the, in the horizon, meaning that there are gonna be some restrictions in the use of insecticides that's gonna probably be one of the main drivers that is gonna uh, force us to think about doing all this precision spraying and looking at the plant level and then spot spraying, and then where's all this precision agriculture is gonna fall in. Um, again, there is some technology that is not, not so new anymore, and I sent it to you, some of the examples about, you know, vacuuming trap crops using alfalfa strips and strawberries and insectary plants like the alyssum flowers to attract beneficials and, and lettuce crop. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Again, my name is Ahana Deposo. I'm happy to assist you with any other information. Please do not hesitate in reaching out to me. Email is adeposo at bt.edu. Stay safe.